How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and we're on to the last one of the Let's Talk About uh, discussion videos where we cover the different coloured leaders from set 17 coming out soon. And it's unlike the other ones, there's only one really leader to go over for black but there are some ever black decks that while black was hit like across the board with some of the hits because it's black had like a very good engine that was used across a lot of decks. Uh, some of them did survive, and some of them came out a little bit stronger, in my opinion. But before we get into the video, feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. It help like liking the vi these videos. Let's me know if you enjoy this kind of thing, so I can keep doing it. Also, comment down below anything you want to put down. And also, as well as that, feel free to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It keeps you updated with my videos as when they drop, and even by clicking the notification bell, you get alerts to when they do drop. And at every 100 subs, I do a giveaway, so next one will be 400. And then when I get when I get to my goal, which is a thousand subs, which I'm currently a third of the way there, I will be doing something special, uh, which I will give the information about what that is as we get closer to that goal. But without further ado. Let's get into the video and have a look at Black for set 17. So, with this one, it's... The thing with Black, as, I, as I've said with every video as well, is... Well, I'm, I mean all colours in general, is every set we get two of each, two of leaders in every, in every colour. Apart from Black, Black varies where it can either get no leaders and just cards. Um, two leaders, one leader, it varies for Black. And in this set, there is only one Black leader. And that is Toa. So Toa got another leader. I think this is, well, I think the third leader she's appeared on. She did get her own one, uh, first appearance back in the anniversary set, and that one was a very good meta leader. And then most recently it got it in the ultimate click, ultimate set, no, the ultimate deck where it had Mecha Burr on it as well. And this one is all round revolving around tokens and skillless. Uh, which do, do come together because and tokens are counted as skillless unless they gain skills like uh, the only time currently with cards where the tokens are because they're skillless is the token negates because they give you a to uh, blocker or uh, a token with blocker for that turn but after that it becomes skillless again and it seems like an interesting one it has an alter of awakening where instead of getting down to a certain life requirement to flip over you can play a, if you have a black unison with a specify cost of 3, which currently there's only one which comes in the set, then you are allowed, you are able to awaken by, um, I think it's get a token and untap 2, so a different kind of awakening that would no draw or anything, but you get 2, un two energy, extra energy and also as well as that you get a token on board, I think 2, I can't remember if it's 1 or 2 tokens, so you've got the awaken side. but. It does have some interesting stuff. So it's got only one unison to help it alternate waking, which is the super mirror. But luckily, that one has. Well, it's got an interesting auto, where at the start of your opponent's next turn, you choose it to one of your uh, battle cards, the skillless battle cards, so tokens or skillless if you're playing the skillless stuff. And it gains blocker to help defend yourself. And it just has two plus skills, so it has option two different plus skills, and both of them give you some nice advantage. We are play up to two tokens or you draw a card you um move one of your skills battle cards to then draw a card to get in a draw and then warp one of your opponent's battle cards. So quite nice utility having two options while also keeping the markers high on it which is nice and a 20k base is stuff with the scoff at really. And it also does have like a boss boss card in the set being a demon god toa and it also has previous support like the poutine we got in I remember if it's the next set, or like the last set, set before, we've had a pretty good booty you can get off of it. And also it does get support from previous ones as well, because uh, if you can't remember, or weren't playing around that time, when we got the first anniversary box, we had support in the form of Demogra for Toa and Demogra leaders. But then, it was mainly at the time support for the old Demogra leader, and since then we haven't really had uh, a Demogra leader since, but that was support back for them, that still works now. Be able to help you awaken a bit quicker, like get your life down, to then play things 
because it allows you to play a poutine and gravy and since its release we've had some pretty good poutine cards and some pretty decent gravy cards as well so that'd be something you want to look at if you are interested in this leader and it does look interesting like competitive wise it's probably opened up a little bit more now since we've got the um like a white or a band to black as I said because the Gogeta's like the Gogeta Zeno and Overrealm stuff got hit so we lost Secret Identity and Bardock as generic Overrealms for every deck and the Gogeta stuff got hit in 14 getting put to 1 and that was normally a package that a lot of dark black decks did by putting in some Gogeta's and Vegeta Zenos like in the more informed of super combo with some good Goku uh, that were 5 costing Goku Zenos and then putting in the 14 and some other, like a bit more of the package like maybe even the uh, 8 drop or stuff, stuff like that to have a viable package for most decks for, for any deck really because of how generic and useful 14 is for any any deck that wants to play that can play black and add them into it but since that got hit a lot it took a hit for some power in that a lot of decks black decks use for filler and just to fill out their deck and due to that I felt like Demon God Toa could be quite interesting and it does seem like a quite an interesting leader as well like the Roman Tokens has got a little niche like some leaders do that are quite fun like King Cole with Fields, Bojack stuff with Energy and stuff like that so I think it could be pretty viable it's, I haven't tested it or tried to test it yet it's not as interesting as me because there's more, some, some stuff more interesting in the set but if you're interested in Black and a uh, fan of Toa I recommend giving it a try and it could be potentially competitive depending on what uh, how the builds go but not only that, there are ever black decks as well that uh, did survive the list and still get the power. Because as we know, Gogeta Zenel has been hit very hard in the fact that now to get his draw on the leader, there's only five targets you can really use, well, five viable targets. There is the uh, the old original TP promo, but that requires three and can easily be stopped from coming down to the top of the draw or removed as soon as it hits the board. So that's got lack. Uh, like lacking now on its pressure and drawing and but there are other decks in the format like we've got some here shown so first one we've got is Dark Broly this one that got hit quite hard it got hit twice quite hard on the um on the lead by basically making the activate battle you see on the see on it there being once per turn so like everyone's it used to be that you could just you could turn any of your 30k's at zero combo cost and zero combo power into 5k boost for it offensively or defensively but that's what they want to return to to be more careful about that and then more recently it was added a uh, to its free um six drop dark broly battle cards they had a errata to their cost to play themselves for, fr uh, for free but I activate main by adding a black energy cost to it for one so you, you no longer play it for free you've got to at least pay one energy so you make making use of it but you're still getting out some powerful battle cards and basically 30k beat sticks with effects which is quite cool so now it, like it, it got probably hit the heart the least from it as well because it was mainly using 14 so now it's lost three of those but it's still like the, it didn't get hit as hard as like say Gogeta Zeno it could still be quite a good viable thing because it's a black deck and black has some good tech cards as well it's got very good utility because black is normally one that ha could support any other color, given some of the uh, cards that have been released in it. And I feel like Dark Broly could probably see, still play, and do quite well. And it has been doing well even before the recent list update, in, or at least in the EU as well. And then we've also got Sin Zeno. Like, Sin Zeno, technically, it, it can count like um, some other decks. Like, there's a few decks that can identify themselves as a separate identity outside their color and Zeno, Sin Zeno is one of them because it's a mill deck and mill can be seen as his own like, arch type along with like call a mill, genome mill, android 18 mill when it's viable and stuff like that and not really count towards its colour because it's got a mill focus which plays a bit differently to how the colour does but it does have some, this is an interesting deck because it's an, it's one of the more interesting mills where it's more interactive than uh because that's what mainly gets hit when mill decks become, well when decks become uninteractive that's when balance go for the throat. But with Sinzano, it is it's got some interaction because you've got an you got an attack, your opponent's got an attack and stuff like that as well. And you want to activate you want to get to the battle in your opponent's turn to activate your extra cards and mill and things like that. And it does have some very strong cards like Oceanus, which is a card that can be used given the fact that it's got no specified cost on it in any deck uh, to help make a 
almost like a, like a really strong floodgate that can potentially end turns depending on how much your opponent draws and how much you mill and it's a very nice card and very good in it because it gets you more plus in it like it doesn't well it doesn't plus in per se it replaces itself by its skills and then you got sin Seno, the four drop that's a barrier that's a barrier deflect to to a uh, skill that should not be on the any card together i also being a blocker as well as a uh, double striker so you can put pressure on with double strike 20k double strike uh can potentially replace itself in this deck when it's played and then it's got the antifake battle which is mark moving marker from you so you can never get become like a pseudo dual attacker or a dual blocker which is quite cool and this is one that also is getting a little bit more support in the upcoming set with the tp as well with the negative energy charge to make you some old secret rares that kind of sort of play but then have fallen off a little bit where we get a new and more powerful secret rares and that is the smoke dragon secret rare and the ball secret rare like and in in this deck you can get that smoke dragon out for four uh for four energy due to the activate main slash battle skill on the four drop here and the lead and then everyone we got is hatchack hatchack being something that's been very strong like niche more like anti-meta since it's released at set eight and is a very good anti-meta deck and like it has the nice floodgate on the effect on it and the floodgate is that like any time when a battle card attacks no matter who the player is that player can't attack with, ba with any other card battle cards or tokens that have seven cost or less uh, for the turn so your opponent's got to think about they like they can only get one unless they're a deck that can drop eight cost or more quite easily and quite cheaply then they've got to be careful about what they attack with because as soon as they attack with a battle card the flood gets triggers and they've got no more attacks unless they can drop eight drops or more and that is not 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 something a lot of decks can do and given this it makes it easier to get to your awaken which happens on turn three get like all, always have to wait until turn three at least to awaken there's no alternative awakening and it does have some quite niche things like it's got also more support like given the fact we've got unisons now it's not as strong as before we got unisons because now they've got an extra way to attack uh get around the floodgate because before it was just leader swing and then one battle card swing so two swings a turn it was limited to and now with the release of unisons you can get bypass that depending on how many unisons you play in your deck or if you've got a unison set up not only not only does that uh, an issue for hatchack but it's also a benefit because now it has the like unisons like the likes of ss4 barnock which gives it extra draw power in the plus one and also kind of never floodgate for if they do go with battle cards and can get eight cost and more by putting a condition on where if they want to attack battle cards they got a warp card from hand and hat check does also have some nice tech to warp hands it's like a kind of it could be a hand control deck in warp with which is uh more beneficial than most hand control decks because where it's warping from hand it makes the anti hand control stuff we've got uh irrelevant because that only triggers on discard where hatchack when black cards are normally warping not discarding then it has access to some very st strong cards like um sp uh, supreme card time the negate which can potentially negate two attacks with one use and can easily become that come down to a one drop but is permanent so you can negate an attack and then use it also to warp something else for the turn so that can't attack and then you've got like a nice finisher and good um, management like resource management in the s4 cochita which is a nice package that any deck can use and it makes a very good use in there because you can get Demogra the 5 drop on board to swing with that first to make a warp one hand and then play this and use this attack so you can attack after because it's 8 costs or more to rip more from hand and control board and help you uh, win the resource game and then we've got one of the newest ones that came out in the last set being SSG Church which has seen some play but this also gets hit uh, this also does get hit by the 14 limit but not as hard because it still has its own engine and own uh, arch type that it can use to help still be viable and it even has some very strong cards in the fact that it's got SSG Trunks Power Awaken which is a very strong card and is a great use in this and easily triggerable in this to be basically keep using strong overwhelms in this because there are still good overwhelms in black and just in general and some that benefit with this trunks and it's even got a good counter attack with pan as well being like a pseudo doesn't negate the attack but then put the condition the same as like topo and boo where if your opponent will attack wants to attack for the rest of the turn i think just with battle cards is it uh let's have a look so you just you do discard a card as well 
but then your opponent, if they want to attack battle cards for the turn, so it's not on, it doesn't uh, affect your leader or the unison. But if your opponent gets wide, it's a horrible thing to have dropped on you. And uh, just make it so if they want to attack battle cards, they ditch two from the hand each time, giving a nice little thing that's restricted to SSG trunks, and it gives it a little bit of an edge. And also, since we're another thing you can potentially use as well is you can use the you can use the Supreme Cloud of Time. I think if you can't use the Supreme Cloud of Time because of the fact that the Trunks is a Saiyan Earthling, where like the Supreme Kai promo that was normally used for Kajita needs your leader to be just a Saiyan only black cut leader. But to get around that, you also have access to things like Gohanks, which we got in the same set as uh, Gogeta, that allow you to have another way to free play uses from your warp or drop. And uh, had that on board with having like a nice 15k as well, which is another option if you want to go for unison route without paying energy. And then the last one we've got is AOD. Now, AOD isn't technically like a black deck really. It does have a black leader, but it's more of like a mo like one of those few decks that uses multiple colors, like more than just a dual uh, multicolor. It uses multiple different colours because as a permanent where you treat cards of dinner specified costs of that archetype, this be an agent destruction. So you can play multiple different colours and not, not worry about what you charge and stuff, apart from certain effects. And this is a deck that I think with the bat with the like heavy hit to Gogeta Seno is more of a viable use. And I say that because Gogeta Seno was the worst matchup for this and with it being one of the best deck uh, best decks in the format at the time. It kind of hindered this because if you wanted to set up um, your your Barbody, which is the main crux to the deck, which you want to set up the Barbody to make all your thing your plays your plays cheaper and everything costs a little bit less, like turning your two drops into one drops and your one drop two drop three drops into two drops, so you can play off your leader. Gogeta Zeno kind of hindered that because it had that six drop um, Gogeta and now you done warp things with your barrier, so getting rid of your opponent's boo and making it warped just hindered the thing because if you couldn't if you can't get them back then you had a hard time and once you removed it you have to re-establish it to make the cost go down so if you warped it during your turn then the OD would have a trouble being able to defend himself because their cost would go up and it would be very like cost effective but once it's that gone and it's unlikely to be played but the Gogeta could 6 drop could still be played as barrier removal because every deck needs barrier removal uh, I feel like this has a better chance now to be strong because it has access and easy use of dropping the yellow slug as well, being able to shut your opponent off of uh, drawing outside the leader, which a lot of decks do, like with Boo, Unison and other things like that. And you can protect it quite well as well because it's got a really good, a really good counterplay here in Android 13 and a very good negate in Garlic as well and a way to soft awaken and keep gaining advantage through the extra card, the Agent of Destruction Strike Back. So this is a very good pick and it could and it's one of the few aggressive decks we've still got in the format that could um help like uh give an edge as we go into a more mid rangey format. Not only that, but black has like a lot of good tech cards. Like looks like uh, black started off as a colour that's like more of a support that you add into whatever colour you're playing as like extra help. And along the way, since up until now, we've been getting slowly more arch type like black being his own colour, but it still does have a lot of strong cards. Like you see Quartzakai being one of the best cards in the game, like one of the best techs and uses that almost every deck plays. And then you've got everyone's like Jiren so well the fittest to help deal with any blue deck that uh well deciding for if you come against blue deck if they're just in case they can get down turning the tide, because turning the tide is a just a ridiculously good card that you gotta watch out for and if you want to do fit it you've got that um can't play to help uh worry about it less. And then if you're having issue with things like um, the aggro sin or decks that play eight drop and more, like seven drop and more battle cards early, earlier, like and you don't want to kind of get further than turn three, you have Shin Noble Supremacy being a cantrip that also then stops it, stops your opponent from being on attack with seven cost or more until you get to while well, you have three or less energy. So nice tech cards. Now you got loads of other ones as well. There's probably too many to count, but these are three good ones I thought I'd be showcasing in the last slide. But that is it covering black decks. So black is still a very strong one, and there are still some good black decks. I would just move off the normal of mainly people wanting to go good Zeno because it's the it was the best black deck, at, like until it, until the um, changes of the new list. 
But yeah, and it's gonna be fun playing things like Hatchack, even though people do like don't I really don't like Hatchack and other different things and like AOD coming back would be quite fun. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Once again feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.